Let's start in the Skybet Championship where the three relegations have already been decided with Peterborough United and Barnsley now confirmed to join Derby County in Skybet League One next season, which gives us the perfect excuse to talk to the Reading interim manager, Paul Ince, whose team have survived. Uh, the, is it is it a feeling of relief in C that you feel? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, I think, you know, when, you, when we first came into the job, um, me and Alex Ray, um, we knew it was going to be a tough challenge. You know, at, at the time, the team was averaging about 0.4 points a game, which is not um, staying up material, to be fair. So we managed to get into 1.25. So there's been an increase in, in points. First, there's been a, um, in performances, I've got a lot better. And um, that's shown in, in the games that we've won, you know. So um, I think this, I think every time, you know, you have a challenge and you, you think about the ramifications if you if you don't, if you do go down, you know, and it's not just, you know, the players, it's not, it's not the managers, sort of, you know, you've got to think about the fans, you've got to think about the staff. You know, if you go into League One, then, you know, you start cutting costs, there's redundancies, people lose their jobs, you know, people got families and kids to support. So... There's a lot of pressure on myself as a manager to try and keep us in this league. So, um, yeah, to finally get there um, is a relief. Yeah. So to that end, I mean, a very different point in your life. But I just wondered how you, your kind of rating of the success compares to the two Premier Leagues and two FA Cups and League Cup and European Cup Winners' Cup. Do you, do you get anything like the same sort of sensation of satisfaction um I, I, do, I do in a different way i do in a different way because I'm, especially under these circumstances you know as i said to you before clem um and we've been talking over many years and every time we meet you keep saying oh when you're gonna get back in when you're gonna get back in and you know <laughs> and i'm like oh, i'm not too sure not too sure and then all of a sudden out the blue you know eight years down the line you know you, you're managing a football team um um with, with the challenge of keeping them up in the championship. So it's been a massive achievement. It, you know, it's, it's not the great escape, but it's just nice when you, you know, you take that decision to manage a football team because it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to go back in after eight years. Doesn't mean I can't manage it. You know, you don't forget how to ride a bike. So, um, you know, so it, as much as people raise their eyebrows and say, oh, it's a long time, eight years, I'm not. 90, I'm, I'm in the 50s, so it's, it's not hard. I don't forget how to manage, you know, and I don't think the game hasn't changed. Um, it's just got more staff <laughs> and our sports analysts and all that stuff uh, that I'm used to. But it was no different to when I was at Blackburn in the Premier League. So, yeah, listen, it, it, it ranks up there with an achievement. Uh, it's different achievement because obviously when you're playing football and you're winning titles and FA Cups, you know, it's, you know, you're, it's a collective thing, Clem, you know. As a manager, it, it could be a really lonely job. You know, you kind of, even though you're not on your own, you are on your own, to be fair, because the pressure is always on you to provide the results. And um, so the fact that we've done that, you know, is, is very, very pleasing for me. Yeah. You, 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 when you were appointed, you provided for me one of the quotes of the season when you said, I was, I was at the back sink washing me sand wedge <laughs> and when I got the phone call. At any point, did you have a moment where you thought, why on earth am I doing this to myself? Where you were you were trading the life of playing golf and all those lovely things with the incredible pressure and scrutiny of football management? Yeah, there was plenty of those thoughts that went through my head. And um, no, you're absolutely right. I was, you know, on Saturday, it's the competition day at Tesla Golf Club. So, um, you know, I was looking forward to that. And then I got a phone call Friday evening. And all of a sudden, your mind just goes into a, a different kind of mindset. And all of a sudden, you start thinking, do you want to, am I that mad? Am I that stupid? Do you want to go back into that? And, you know, and it took me, I mean, as much as I went to the Preston game on the Saturday, and then obviously Parnovich left on the Saturday after the game, and I was working on the training ground on the Sunday, and I was walking on the training ground, I'm thinking, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, but foot was my life. Foot was my passion you know I love football and I've you know and just the opportunity to go back and you know you, you always analyze a team look at the players what what you got there have you got a good chance evaluate have you got a good, good chance of staying up and we had some very very good players this team last season finished seventh in, in, in the championship 
with the same squad, um, minus one or two players. So, you know, I was probably had a chance of staying up. Uh, but yes, I did at times think, you know, eight years out, no grey hairs, everything's nice, sleeping at night like a baby, and all of a sudden you wake up at four or five, think about formations and, you know, if this happens to that team and, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I've done it, so that's a good thing about it. Yeah. I mean, do you think people on the outside just really do not grasp what is involved, Paul? The, mm. the, that, that pressure that you put on yourself, that you are under. So many people who, who just watch from the periphery don't know all the different things that you have to deal with and manage and probably a lot of stuff that we never get to hear about as well. Yeah, they do. People just think it's about just, you know, going on the training pitch, coaching and picking a team to try and win on Saturday. You know, there's so much so much work and, you know, involved from working from, from the top down to the bottom. So many people want a lot of your time, you know, to do this, to do that, functions here. You know, it, you know, it's, it's so, so demanding. It's actually a 24-7 job. And, yeah, people can say, well, people, you know, they get paid well. That's in the Premier League, you know, win the championship. But... For me, it's not even about money. You know what I mean? It's the stress that you kind of put on yourself every day. You know, you don't sleep well at night. You know, things happen on the pitch, you get injuries, and then you've got to try and, you know, all those things, you know, especially with Reading this season, you know, it's been tough for us. We've had four or five players who've been out. You know, we had Scott Dan out for most of the season, John Swift out for the season, Andy Wigamoto out for the season. So... We've, we've, we've been, down, been down to the bare bones, which makes the achievement even more special in, in, in my eyes. But, yeah, it is demanding. You know, you're, I'm down at Reading. I don't see my wife. I don't see my children. You know, probably once or, once or twice a month. So, you know, it, we are human beings, and, we are, and I'm a family man. And, you know, to not to see my family every day like I used to, you know, is it, a big decision to make. So, um, but, yeah, it is dem demanding. But we love football. You know, that's why Roy Hodgson's still managing it at the ages at, 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 at Watford. Yeah. I mean, just so I don't have to continually pest you for the next few years, are you going back in? When are you yeah. going to get back in? Has this scratched a bit of an itch for you? Has this excited you or made you think, do you know what? I love my life outside of football. I, 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 mm. I could live the rest of my life happily without it. Where has it left you post this achievement, Paul? I think, it's, I think it's left me thinking about doing it again, staying in, in, in the job. Um, but it's also left me thinking, do I want to go through that for another... You know, because I do, because I, I think of myself as that I've spent all my life playing football, you know what I mean? And, I've, you know, you don't spend time with the kids and the wife, and then all of a sudden you go from football into management, and then you're away from the family. Eventually, sometime in your life, you're going to have to have a bit of me time, you know, with the family. And that's that's always been an issue for me. Uh, as I say, yeah, I've done it for eight years and it's been great. Um, but I also need to look at next year. You know, we've still got, we've still got an embargo next year at Reading. Um, we've got 12 players and out, out of contract now. Um, we can only bring in loanies or free transfers. Um, and it's going to be tough again, tough again next year. So um, all those things I need to look at. Because you know, I, I want to, I want to give myself a fighting chance. You know, as I said, we spoke before, Clem. You know, I had to go to Macclesfield to start my managing career. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy. Everything I've been to has been a challenge. Notts County, Blackpool, you know, MK Dons was great. We had a good team, got promoted. Um, but every team I've been to, probably financially, it's not, it's not giving me a chance to go where I want to go. Um, and I always kind of think it'd be nice to have that kind of project where I could build a football team, uh, my team, which I've not really had a chance to do. So. There's a lot of thinking about it. There's a lot of talking to the wife, Claire. You know, she's up in the wheel. I'm down in Reading. So it won't be easy if I do stay down at Reading. But listen, it, there's still a kind of, um, yeah, you know, I've still got, I've still got that glint in my eye that, you know, I've enjoyed it. As much as it's been tough, you know, I've really, really enjoyed it. And, um, um, yeah, I'm, I've still got that smile of uh, excitement that maybe I could, you know, get stay back in the game. Um, but... We shall see, Clem. We shall see. I was going to say, so as we are talking now and you've still got two games left, yeah. you, you're going to leave it, get those out of the way, and then you will sit down and have dialogue with Reading, with the owners, with the CEO, mm. and see which direction they want to go and if those those values are aligned to what you want to achieve going forward. 
Yes, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Obviously, next two games, you know, we've got a last home game up against West West Brom on on Saturday, so it's always nice to go out, you know, with a win at home. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I think when you think about, you know, having this project, I've always said that for me to go back into management, it, it needs to be a project. You know, I've spent two. I look at my managerial career, and um, it's been okay to be fair. My win ratio has been very good, so. But I've got despondent with it, Clem. You know, because you won't get the opportunities to show, you know, what you can do as a manager. So I've always said that if I go back into it, um, it'll have to be a project. You know, I can't keep going to manage it and doing one years and losing your job. Um, so I sit down with the owners and um, see where they want to go with it. As I said, we know next year is going to be tough because of the embargo. But if we can stay in this league next year, and then obviously start spending a few quid and start building a, a team that can hopefully get into the Premier League, but that's my opinion. I'll sit down with uh, the CEO and, and the owner and, and see where we go. But it's, it's a wonderful club, wonderful fans. The training ground's amazing. Structurally, it's perfect. It's geared to, to go into the Premier League. It's just, you know, things that it's things that happen straight away and we know how tough the championship is. You know, we know how hard it is to get out of there. So um, there's a long, long way to go for Reading as far as getting there. But if there's a project in place and everything's in place, then hopefully... We'll get there soon. Yeah, I'm just mesmerised by your hair. How old are you these days? Did you say how old? Are, how old do you know this? Mate, you are right. I'm looking closely. There, there doesn't seem to be any grey at all. I've dyed it this morning before I come on the show. That's what it was. So <laughs> <laughs> I can only dream, I can only dream of doing such things. Oh, <laughs> great to talk to you. Congratulations. Well done with uh, a fantastic achievement in turning the situation around and keeping them up. Great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on the Officially AFL podcast. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for having me on, mate. See you soon.